Because Stokes' theorem converts one type of integral to another type of integral, it can be really helpful. Sometimes one side is really tough, the other side is really pretty easy. Let's look at an example where that's the case. Let's say that you're given a vector field f that is of the form 2xzi minus zj plus x squared k, and you want to compute the circulation of this along the intersection of two surfaces in 3D. These surfaces are y squared plus z squared equals 6, and 5x minus 9y plus 3z equals 11. Now, let's not worry about orientation. We'll deal with that later. Let's worry about these two surfaces. The first one, y squared plus z squared equals 6, that's a cylinder that opens up along the x-axis. The second surface is clearly the equation of a plane that cuts along some skewed direction. These two are going to intersect in a loop. I think it's going to be an ellipse. And I don't know exactly what the equation for that would be. I would have to parametrize that loop somehow. And then I would have to convert this vector field to the work one form and integrate that along that parametrized loop. That's not impossible, but it would not be fun. You'd have a lot of sines and cosines and look at that vector field and ooh, that would be some work. So let's use Stokes' theorem instead. Let's take the work one form associated to f, 2x z dx minus z dy plus x squared dz, and let's differentiate that. d alpha is what? Using the product rule on the first term, I get 2z dx wedge dx plus 2x dz wedge dx. The second term gives minus dz wedge dy. The third term, plus 2x dx wedge dz. Now notice there's a lot of cancellation that goes on here. dx wedge dx is zero. dz wedge dx is minus dx wedge dz. And those guys cancel. And in the end, I am left with d alpha being dy wedge dz. That's really simple. That means in vector field language that the curl of f is the constant vector field i. It just moves to the right. Okay, now because this derivative is so simple, this means that it's going to be easier to compute the surface integral invoking Stokes. So what surface do we use? The natural choice is that flat surface that is given by the intersection of the plane with the interior of that cylinder. So I have this flat elliptical disk. Okay, Stokes' theorem says that if I want to compute the circulation, if I want to compute the integral of alpha f over this curve, this boundary of d, then I can integrate d alpha over the interior of d. I'm integrating dy wedge dz. What is that? That is oriented projected area in the yz plane. Now, since the cylinder opens up along the x-axis, that means it's exactly the cross-sectional area of that cylindrical disk. The cylinder has radius square root of 6, so that area is 6 pi. Oh, i got to be careful here. It's plus or minus 6 pi, depending on orientation. Now, I said we weren't going to worry about orientation, but eventually we do. So what do you do? How do you relate the orientation of the surface to the orientation of the boundary curve? This is a little bit tricky. You have to be careful. Most students find using the right-hand rule is a good rubric for coming up with the induced orientation on the boundary curves given an orientation on the surface in the form of a normal vector, a vector that points up from the surface in some direction. If you are careful, if you use your right hand, then it's not so bad to figure out the relationship between the surface orientation and the induced boundary orientation when you're in 3D. I recommend doing a lot of practice on this front.